got a past exam question here on year 13 equilibrium you can test yourself with so if you want to have a go the link to the questions in the description of the video so just click on that have a go at the question and then play on when you're ready for the answer okay so part a kc expression and units so remember kc uses square brackets because it deals with equilibrium concentrations so it's products over reactants and just remember that the uh, number balance in the equation becomes a power so it's that over that units wise well we've got moles per decimeter cubed squared on the top cubed on the bottom and so therefore that will cancel down to one over moles per decimeter cubed so taking everything up to the top you flip the sign of the power so you get dm to the three mol to the minus one or you could write mol to the minus one dm to the three it doesn't matter which way around you write these as long as the correct powers next to the term part b we've got to calculate the amount in moles of no2 in the equilibrium mixture so the our sort of initial answer is going to come out from this kc expression in moles per decimeter cubed because we're going to get the concentration of uh, no2 and then we just need to factor in the volume and get it into moles okay so i've rewritten the kc expression and then i've subbed in the numbers that we know so 45 is the case C. The equilibrium concentration of NO is going to be moles over the volume. Remember that's squared. Multiplied by the moles of O2 over the volume, 4. Okay, so there's the numbers in there. And basically what I'm going to do now is going to take that over to this side. So it's going to be multiplied by that 45. And then I'm going to get rid of that square, that squared sign and make it square root of. Okay, so there's all of that. So... The equilibrium concentration of NO2 comes out at 0.3. That would be moles per decimeter cubed. And then obviously to turn it into moles, concentration times volume, 0.3 times 4 gets you 1.2. Okay, so that's the calculation over. We now need to deal with the sort of wordy answers. So the first one, first part of C, predict with a reason whether the forward reaction is exothermic or endothermic. Right, so if we look at the Kp values, what's happened going up in temperature from 290 to 1000, Kp's actually dropped. So what that means is the equilibrium's gone sort of backwards, gone to the reactant side. So what sort of reaction favours an increase in temperature? It's the endothermic direction. So the reverse reaction must be endothermic because that temperature increase has favoured the reactant side. So therefore, the forward reaction must be exothermic. So I would write something like this. Kp is decreased at the higher temperature. Therefore, the forward reaction is exothermic. Okay, so we're moving on to the sort of trickiest thing to explain, I reckon. And this is, uh, we've got a statement explained in terms of Kp. So we can't give a Le Chatelier's principle answer, where all we'd need to say is increase in pressure favours the side with the fewest moles, so it moves to the right. I mean, that's dead easy. Can't do it in that way. We've got to explain in terms of Kp how the equilibrium position would change if you increase the pressure on the system. Important to note there that the temperature stays the same. So I've written up a Kp expression. I'm going to refer to that in a second. The first thing I would say, just to make it nice and clear, partial pressures of everything is going to increase if you increase the pressure. And if we refer to this Kp expression, you can see that the denominator term will be affected more because there's a greater power effectively on this denominator term because you've got squared times to the power 1. So effectively you've got cubed on the bottom and only squared on the top. So when all the partial pressures increase, it's actually going to be more, the denominator term in the Kp expressions increases more. And what that will do is it will knock it out of equilibrium because it will actually make Kp go down a little bit because the denominator's got bigger. So to get back to equilibrium, in other words, to restore Kp, it's really important that we say that, so we're kind of making it clear that we know that Kp has to stay the same because the temperature is the same. So to restore Kp to its value for that temperature, the partial pressure of NO2, that needs to go up and these need to come down. Okay, so how does it do that? How does it make the partial pressure of NO2 go up and the partial pressures of these go down? It moves forwards, it moves to the right. So 
I'll just say that those last two things again. To restore Kp to its value for the temperature, the partial pressure of NO2 needs to increase and the partial pressures of NO and O2 need to decrease. And the equilibrium does that by shifting to the right.